come from daydreaming, fantasizing, and using our imagination to make something unusual or different. Alan and Lisa used their imaginations when they were asked to enter a project in the school science fair. Alan thought of making something mechanical or with electronic controls, while Lisa wanted to design a butterfly mobile or a singing flower. Neither of them liked each other's ideas until they saw a toy robot in a hobby shop window and decided to make a talking robot for their project. But they had a problem. How do you make a robot talk or move? Where do you start? Lisa thought of her neighbor, Dr. Fredericks, who was a college science teacher and knew all about computers and research ideas. Dr. Fredericks was grading papers, but stopped long enough to talk to them about their robot. Lisa asked how they could make a small robot that could have a hollow voice and twist its head or body. Alan wanted to know if the robot could be remote controlled by a radio transmitter, like a garage door opener. Dr. Frederick shook her head. Operating a radio-controlled robot or using a transmitter receiver was very expensive. When Alan looked disappointed, Dr. Fredericks assured him that there were other ways to put action into the robot. She said there were three important problems they would have to research and solve before building the robot. Making it do the actions they wanted it to do, having it say what they wanted it to say, and having it look the way they wanted it to look. Dr. Fredericks explained to Alan that he could direct the robot to do what they wanted it to do. And Lisa could carry out the orders by pulling levers or strings and providing the voice. Dr. Fredericks had lots of magazines and books on computer and electronic information in her library. She let Alan and Lisa look through them for ideas she hadn't thought of. Then Lisa and Alan sat for a long time going through the books in the magazines. They didn't find much about robots. Dr. Frederick suggested they try the public or school library for more information. Or to help in their research, they could also talk to other people, such as an electronics expert, a radio repairman, or their parents. Lisa and Alan thanked Dr. Fredericks for her help. Neither of them knew a radio repairman, a mechanic, or an electronics expert, but they would ask Lisa's father. In the laundry room, Lisa's father was installing an air vent to their new clothes dryer. Alan picked up a piece of the vinyl tubing and showed it to Lisa. Look at this neat tubing. Wouldn't it make terrific arms or legs for the robot? Lisa shrugged. It's too big. Maybe it could be used for the body and have legs coming out of it, or arms. Lisa tried to make spooky words come through the tubing, but it didn't sound like a robot at all, just like her own voice. Looking around the garage, she found the flexible hose on the large dust vacuum. Disconnecting it, she made weird sounds, just like a robot. But Alan still had his mind on some electronic speaker that could project his voice. He asked Lisa's father if he knew a radio repairman. Lisa's father had a good friend, Ted Brown, who had a small shop where he repaired all kinds of electronic equipment, and he was sure Mr. Brown would talk with them. Lisa reminded Alan that they should go to a library first, like Dr. Frederick suggested. Then they would know more of the size and shape of the robot and what they wanted it to do. Hurrying, Lisa and Alan got to the public library before it closed. They asked the librarian if there were any books they could check out on making robots, or anything about robots. She showed them the card catalog where titles and subjects of books were filed. Under the R's were books on robots. Using the numbers on the card, Lisa and Alan went to the book section where the science subjects were kept. Here they found several books on robots. Looking through each one of them, Alan and Lisa didn't see anything on how to make a robot. But they did find pictures of how robots looked and information on what robots could do. They also looked at some science magazines for ideas on making a robot move, 
Out of all this research, something would be helpful. The next afternoon, in Ted Brown's shop, Lisa and Alan looked wide-eyed at the display of tubes, televisions, radios, and speakers being worked on. Alan asked Mr. Brown if there were any small two-way radios or anything that could make a robot talk. Mr. Brown showed Alan a small walkie-talkie. It could possibly be used in a robot and carry Alan's voice from a short distance away. Mr. Brown also suggested a small tape recorder. It had a microphone for recording, and Alan's voice could be played back when it was turned on. Now Alan and Lisa had two good ideas for making the robot talk. It really helped to talk to experts. On their way to Lisa's house, they talked about how the robot should look, like the pictures in the library books, or like the robot in the hobby shop window. In the kitchen, they got out cereal boxes, shoe boxes, old Christmas boxes, grocery sacks, and all kinds of food packaging. They experimented with different shapes of heads. They tried an egg carton for the shoulders where the control buttons should go and put a cereal box on paper tube legs. Alan shook his head. This just isn't going to work. Now we can make it talk, but how do we make it move? Lisa ran for her drawing paper and felt pens. She wanted to make sketches of the robot doing something. That would help them decide on how to make it. Lisa drew a box-like bird with wide, flopping wings. It doesn't have to be shaped like a regular robot, she said. It could be like a bird. She then sketched a curving caterpillar made of the vent tubing from the dryer. If we put this on wheels, like a skateboard, or made it spin around... Lisa was interrupted by the voice of her father. Can you use this? he asked, holding out the robot they had seen in the hobby shop window. This was really exciting. Now Lisa and Alan would know just how to make a robot work and what to make it look like. Alan turned it on, and they watched it walk across the table. It all looked so simple. After Lisa's father left, Alan looked at the seams of the robot. If they could get the wind-up part out, they could use it in their robot. Lisa spoke out sharply. That wouldn't be fair. We can't just copy this robot. Showing her drawings to Alan, she explained that they wanted something different, something unusual. Alan said, no, I want something more mechanical, more like a real robot. Not silly robots like these drawings. He suddenly grabbed them from her hands. He threw them in the air. They couldn't make anything that dumb. He was tired of the whole thing. Lisa was hurt and angry. Big blockhead, she shouted at Alan. You're nothing but a blockhead robot. Alan walked away and stood with his back to Lisa, sulking. How did he get into this? Lisa sat down on the floor by her drawings. She thought they were pretty good. Maybe hard to make into robots, but they were unusual. Alan thought about what Lisa had said. You're nothing but a blockhead robot. If he was a blockhead robot, he could act like one. He spread his arms and slowly walked toward Lisa. I'm the monster blockhead, he growled, and I am going to get you. Lisa giggled, forgetting her anger. As she watched Alan walking toward her, an idea flashed into her mind. You are a robot. Let's make our robot big like you. Not little like the toy. Alan liked the idea. He grabbed up a cereal box and, moving like a robot, ate spoonfuls of the breakfast food. He spoke with a hollow voice. See the biovitamin robot? If you eat all your minerals and vitamins, you'll become... A spur bionic kid. Alan and Lisa decided their robot could demonstrate good nutrition for their health class. Lisa began sketching a robot. She drew buttons down the front of the body and labeled them. 
vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin C, vitamin E, and P for protein. Alan talked in his robot voice again, as he would at the science fair. And now, my undernourished classmates, I am here to show you how to eat properly. Turn my vitamin C button, and I will give you an orange. Or turn my vitamin B button, and I'll give you some whole wheat bread. Now, if you will turn my M button, I may give you some mustard or mushrooms or mousetraps or music.